Okay, we're going to go ahead and get started. And uh, today we're going to talk about uh, tax deed and overage education. And I'm actually going to share with you guys um, a live auction that I'm currently doing. But before I do that, I'm just going to do a little introduction on what are tax deeds and what are overages. One of the most amazing things about tax deeds and overages is that they work hand in hand. So this is for investors that have no money and it's also for investors that have uh, a little money and they wanna actually start getting, uh, they wanna start they want to start investing, but they may not have tens or hundred thousands of dollars. So just to get in it, I would just want to talk about what are tax deeds and then what are tax overages. Tax deeds is when an owner owns their property and they don't pay their property taxes. So one of the things that most people um, will ask me is, well, what if the person has a mortgage on the property, right? Well, if a person has a mortgage on the property and they don't pay their property taxes, the mortgage company will oftentimes pay the property taxes. However, if the mortgage company does not do that, then the tax deed becomes a legal document and then that gives the government of that county the authority to sell the property. So one of the main reasons why I love tax deeds is because you get them free and clear. And so, once you go to once the property goes to the tax deed auction there's a thing called overages right so just say for example um, a house at the auction which you're going to see today um, goes for a minimum bid of twenty thousand but it ends up selling for a hundred thousand that's eighty thousand dollars of overage which results in what they call excess funds which is held in an escrow called overages now some of my students get confused uh, excess funds overages, surplus funds, um, they all mean the same. There are different niches, but for today, we're only talking about uh, tax deeds. So I'm going to get right into um, the, the uh, actually live auction, and I'm going to share my screen with you. And let me just go to the beginning. And so this is a website where you can register, it's called Bid for Assets. As you can see right here, it's Bid for Assets. And um, this is a place where you can register for tax deed auctions. However, I wanna be very clear that this website is not only for tax deed auctions, it's also for foreclosure sales, share sales, bank owned properties. There are several different things that this website offers, but for the sake of this video, we're only talking about tax deeds. What I love about this uh, website though, is that it kind of gives you an idea of just say, for example, what county you're, you know, what state you're in, for example, California, it's 689 um, auctions going on. In Arizona, there's only four auctions, which was interesting. Look at Alabama only has one auction. Georgia has 15 auctions. Florida has 42. Texas has 50 auctions. Then you have New Mexico that has 10 auctions. So it just really depends on what state you're in and if it's a tax deed state, uh, because you have to remember, I only do tax deeds. And the reason why is because I want to get the deed to the property immediately after purchasing the property. So that's why I do tax deeds and I do not do tax liens. Um, tax liens is pretty much you get a certificate. You don't actually get the deed to the property. So for the sake of this whole live auction, I'm going to show you the process on how to uh, bid at a live auction for a tax deed. So um, you can click right here and we're going to go to county tax sales. And um, this is going to show you all the tax sales that are happening in 2021 calendar year. And they go um, every three months. So as you can see, January is already done, February, March, and um, April hasn't, um, they, they're probably updated soon. But for the sake of this, we're going to, um, I'm currently bidding in Sacramento County. 
even though I'm in Texas. So one of the things that I really love about this is that you can pretty much do this anywhere. I would highly advise uh, knowing someone in that area or being familiar with that area um, because when you're um, looking at properties or you want to bid on a property, you want to kind of have an idea of what you're buying because there's a lot of stuff that goes in it. One of the main things that I teach in my course and in my education is that you make money in the buy. So if you do not buy right, you could make a huge mistake. And so um, it's really important to kind of get educated on, you know, what would be your maximum bid, um, what you would do with that property after you get the um, the tax deed. So there's a lot of different things that go into it. But uh, once again, I'm just kind of like giving you an overlay of like how you can start bidding and to show you that pretty much anyone with any type of budget can purchase tax deed properties. But what I want to cover today is what um, what you need to do if you want to register for a tax deed auction. So like I said, I'm working in uh, the county of Sacramento and um, today is the 23rd, it ends tomorrow. So that's why I wanted to do this video. But what I wanted to also uh, show you is that anytime you decide to uh, bid on an auction, there's always a deposit deadline. So the deposit for this deadline was February 17th. So you have to make sure you have your money in and wired into bid for assets before the action action the auction actually starts. So I just want to go over the deposit instructions and what I really really love about this website is they uh, basically let you know how low the bids are starting. So there's actually a property in California that starts at $1,900. And one of the things is there's no reserve because what reserve means is that if it doesn't uh, reach a certain amount, then they're not going to sell it. Where in these auctions, no matter what the amount is, they're selling it. And uh, just for this county, uh, the single deposit is $5,000, as you can see right here. And then there's a $35 non-refundable processing fee. So they give you the instructions and say that it has to be a bid for assets no later than 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on February 17th. So if you miss the deadline, then you can't actually bid. So I wanted to show you that because that's like one of the most important things. I also um, will cover this shortly about how to register because you can pretty much register on this website for free. Um, but when you, if you actually want to actively be involved in the auction, you definitely have to uh, make a deposit. But another thing I wanted to show you is, like I said, we are doing Sacramento and um, the single deposit is $5,000. Now every county is different. So I was uh, investing in a county last week um, in Washington, and I'm just gonna pull this up just um, because some people are like, well, um, I really don't have a lot of money, but I really want to buy a property. Well, for example, this one's in Washington and Kings County and their bids start as low as $300 and guess what their deposit is? So their deposit's only $300. And the reason why I wanna show you this is because I have a lot of students that um, tell me that they have a very small budget and uh, I always tell them that in this business, there's a budget for everyone. Matter of fact, um, I think I do, when I get on my watch list, I'm gonna show you how some of these properties went for a thousand for um, Washington. So I just wanted to cover, um, you can click on these and it'll tell you what the deposit is. And I just wanted to show you that the deposits are oftentimes different. So I'm gonna go back to, Sacramento County because that's where I'm currently bidding right now. Uh, you also can um, sign up for a weekly email alerts. You can click on the website and register. But for right now, we're gonna go to my account. And so this is kind of like a dashboard of like if I had a some auctions in progress or if I had something on hold or if I was selling something, but this is what I really wanted to show you um, my watch list. Now it says I um, my actual active bid, I've only bid it on one because I was doing this live for everybody that's on the call tonight. Um, and then it also shows you like how many deposits. So I've, I've actually done three online um, bids. Most of the time I, 
actually invest in Texas. So most of those are live auctions. So, I mean, in person live auctions. But what I love about this is that there are mostly all of California is online. So I'm just gonna click on my watch list and it's gonna uh, bring up all the properties that I am um, watching that I wanted to bid on. But as you can see, this is my list. And as you can see, some of these say withdrawn. And then some of these, um, like this says Sacramento County, and it has a zero. That means that no one's bid it on this, okay? So look at all these properties that no one has bid it on. It's just, it's amazing. So what I wanna show you is that um, this property, which was one of the ones, as you can see, this is where my bid, I stopped at this bid because my strategy is, is I'll go in there and play around just to get an idea of who's actually uh, bidding, you know, but I always wait till the end to see what the max amount is. Um, unfortunately for this particular property, which I'm gonna click on it right now, it's actually a physical property. Um, my max was 120,000. So what I wanted to show you was, is I was just gonna place a bid and I could place a bid for 121,700, but I don't wanna do that because I'm at my max. And a lot of times people ask me, okay, well, how do you know what your maximum bid is? Well, because I'm a realtor in California California and in Texas, I, uh, I kind of know what the market is and I could do a back office in my course I kind of show you if you're not a realtor most of mostly all my students are not licensed. So you can do this without having a license, but I say this all to say that you need to know what the actual fix up costs would be for this property to determine your bid. Now, I personally do not like to do fix or flips. I literally wholesale all my properties to flippers. And with that being said, my max was 120 because that would have been 70% ARV of a fix up price, meaning that this particular property on El Cajon in Sacramento sold in uh, February for 180,000. So 70% of that was at 100 and I think it was actually 123, but I kind of like, I was like at 120 was my max. And the only reason why I was doing that is because I'll go back and I'll show you there are some other properties that I was interested in. But what I wanted to show you as well is look at this minimum bid. The minimum bid was $1,900, but look at how many bidders. So there has actually been 56 bids. Now, the interesting thing about this 56 number of bids, this could be me and four other people. It could be me and another person. You really don't know, um, but I'm going to guesstimate it's about five people. Um, on here. Um, and also too, what I will, wanted to show you is that um, when you place a bid, which I wish I would have uh, probably did this sooner than later, is that sometimes you can go in and you can actually place what your maximum bid. So when I was bidding earlier um, this week, which was, I think when I started, it was on Monday, um, I just, I set it for a hundred and I set it for 61,000. But as you can see, this minimum bid is 1900. So anytime someone went up, I, it automatically, I bid it for a hundred dollars. And so my max was 61, which I'll go back there to show you that. And, um, in this, so basically I didn't actually have to be um, physically online as if someone bid it 2000 or 2100 every time someone bid it I automatically was bidding a hundred dollars over until I got to this point which was 61,000 and um, like I was telling you before um, I was gonna go up to 120,000 but my strategy is I kind of wait till the end of the auction which is in right here it tells you 18 hours so I was gonna you know wake up tomorrow morning and see where it was at but now I know that it's beyond what my max is going to be only because um, I'm not flipping it now if I was flipping this um, I probably would have went up you know I could have probably did 125 because I could have uh, there's still enough money between like 
50 to 40,000, depending on the fix up costs, which it, what, it didn't appear that there was a lot of fix up costs, but I know that there was someone living there. So um, it couldn't have been that bad. One of the things that um, I just learned about California just doing this auction alone is that um, once these properties go to the auction, there's no redemption period, meaning the owner cannot come back. And the minute this auction closed, you immediately get possession of that property, which I love. Um, I wanted to show you, let me go down here. Okay, so remember I was telling you about Kings County, Washington. So it closed at zero dollars. Um, and so I wanted to show you, I think this is one of them. Yeah. Oh, the minimum bid was $800. Nobody bought this property. So I just wanted to show you this because it's like sometimes people don't believe me when I say that you can get property for eight or $500. You really can. As you can see, these were all the properties in Kings County and Washington and none of these sold. Now you may be asking why? Why did none of these sell? Well, there could be several different reasons. Um, my number one reason is a lot of people don't know about this and um, or a lot of people miss the deposit deadline or they don't see value in land. There's so many different reasons um, why uh, people don't bid on it. Um, I've been blessed to get good properties and wholesale them, but I always know my strategy before going in. So this is what a watch list looks like. Now I did test this. So if you go in, you can actually, um, you can actually uh, do a watch list without bidding on them. Cause I, um, Wait, did I do this one? Oh, I did make a deposit on this one. So I don't know if you can actually do this unless you do the deposit, but for $300, it's worth it. And let me tell you why. That leads me into my next session about overages. So for example, for those, remember I talked about overages. So one of the things that I've learned by doing overages is that, let me go here, so this is like my favorite. I'm actually gonna go after this one. Um, one of my favorite things about overages is that um, if you don't have any money, right? If you like, you know what, you've always wanted to get into real estate, but you just, you know, you, you're very limited on your income. Um, this is a way that you can actually get into the real estate game with not a lot of money. That's why I try to keep my prices really low because there's so much available to all of us. So let me just talk about overages. Remember when I told you the overage, the minimum bid, um, anything over that amount is what we call excess funds. Sometimes people call them surplus funds. I call them overages. So anything over this 1900 actually belongs to the owner. But what happens oftentimes is the county will send a letter letting them know that, but nine times out of 10, the owner doesn't live there or the owner has vacated the property. So one of the things that I also teach my students is how to get overages before anybody else can tap into the market. So I'm going to just go back. So just imagine this. I'm just going to just say um, this roughly, which I'm sure it's going to go higher, is $120,000 worth of overage that the owner um, can collect. And I'm here to tell you that 99.9% .9 of the owners do not know they can collect the overage amount to this property. So that leads me back to this little watch list that I have. So as you guys can see, pretty much this is the only property that has an overage. Nobody has touched any of these other properties. It's just crazy. Like this one's 26,000, no bids. You see that zero bids and there's 19 hours left. <laughs> Excuse me. So this is basically where you would just place a bid. Now, if you weren't, if you didn't make your deposit, you couldn't place the bid, just FYI. Um, but this just goes to show you that 
This is a really a niche investment. Like everybody's doing short sales. Everybody's doing wholesales. Everybody's doing fix and flips. People are calling me all day long looking for properties. This is a way to get properties without a lot of competition and you're able to get them at different price points. So one of the things I wanted to um, just reiterate was this overage process. Luckily, um, there weren't too many of you on here because I wasn't able to actively um, bid on anything because most of the stuff was closed and some of the properties were not in good areas that I personally wanted to invest in. Um, but just FYI, for example, if this one was $55,000 minimum bid and it went for $155,000, that's $100,000 overage. And I pretty much go into these auctions um, just to see what will end up happening to them so that I can be the first to call the properties on the overage. Now, some of you guys may be wondering, okay, well, how do I do that? I'm glad you asked. Um, in my course, I give you step-by-step -step on how to go after what you need to do, a process on how to locate the owners, where you collect the forms, where you can get a list. However, once the list is posted, pretty much everyone that's in this niche market already has access to it. So I show you a way where you get it before everybody else gets it. So that's um, what I wanted to talk about in regards to overages. And um, now you get an idea to see what uh, the different things are for the tax deed auctions. And let me just go back to tax deed auctions. Ooh, what happened? I'm just gonna go home. So once again, I just wanna recap. Um, this is the calendar for all the tax deed auctions. And this is also another opportunity for you to tap into them to create your own overage list. Uh, if you think that this video was helpful, please like, please subscribe, please make comments. And I look forward to working with you and helping you on the other side. You also can visit me on my Facebook group. It's Tax Deed and Overage Education. It's called Leverage. And um, I'm also there as a resource to answer any questions that you may have. I hope that this video helps and thank you for joining.